YouTube, Pixar Prime 10 here with another Transformers Beast Hunters review. This time of the figure everyone's been waiting for. Deluxe class smoke screen. You can see we got smoke screen right here in his new Beast Hunters packaging. The fourth figure in Wave 2. Been waiting so long to open this guy. I'm finally gonna get to it. He's got an Electronet launcher included. He got you can see how he has detachable armor. Uh, his technical data, strength of a 5, intelligence of 8, speed of an 8, endurance of a 6, rank of a 7, courage of a 9, tower of fire blast of a 7, and skill of an 8, deluxe class series 2, figure number 8, or, yeah, uh, electronet launcher included, and he has shadow quill armor. This Autobot trickster strikes quickly, then disappears behind a black puff of magnetic smoke. Autobot season 1 and 2 of Transformers Prime is sports car mode. I am not waiting any longer. I'm taking this guy out of his packaging. All right, so here we have the Transformers Prime Beast Hunters Deluxe Class Smokescreen opened up out of his packaging in his beastly vehicle awesome mode. But before I can even start to show you this awesome toy, we must look at Smokescreen's instructions. So here they are. We've got Tales of the Beast Hunters, Chapter 10, continuing from Chapter 9, Deluxe Bulkhead. You can see there's Smokescreen, which... One thing's really weird, he's got like some sort of weird canister thing there, but it kind of explains that in the story. You can see his Electronet Launcher. Generates a shadow field that makes Smokescreen very hard to see or target. Delivers powerful bioelectric shocks to enemies and can also be used as an electrified axe. And then we've got Smokescreen Story. With Bumblebee injured and Bulkhead near total shutdown, it's up to Smokescreen to discover where these new and dangerous Predacons are coming from. Luckily, the Autobot Trickster is also capable, is a capable spy, and soon he finds himself himself creeping through the shadows of a remote Decepticon lab. At first, he thinks the place is abandoned, then he discovers a room with large cha glass chambers, each one filled with a strange murky liquid and the vague outline of a beastly machine. Satisfied that he's discovered exactly what Optimus Prime needs to know, he turns to leave, only to find Shockwave blocking his way. You should not have come here, the Decepticon scientist says, raising his laser cannon. Continued in Chapter 11, Voyager Shockwave. So that sounds pretty cool. Sounds like Shockwave is going to take it down on old smokescreen here. But uh, here we have the toy form of smokescreen that everyone's been waiting for, or at least the Hasbro version. We have gotten smokescreen before, but in the Arms Micron line, where it was just a white repaint of, of the knockout line figure, with a new head and all stickered up. But it wasn't really show accurate. It didn't have winged doors. The doors were on his arms. He had wheels in the back. It, it wasn't accurate to me. But uh, my initial fear when I found out we were going to get Shockwave, um, there's two examples of Shockwave and Smokescreen, finally his toy forms in Beast Hunters, was that we were never going to get normal versions of them. They were going to be all beastified like they always have been in, like, or how these other toys have been. But luckily, Hasbro was nice enough to include armor to make them either beastified or non-beastified. So this armor right here, this Shadow Quill armor, as you can see, it's on him, can peel right off. And it's a very soft rubber. What the heck is that? And to reveal a very nice, sleek sports car. And the same thing is with the Voyager Shockwave, it will have detachable armor. So now they were nice enough to give us a normal smoke screen. So here's his armor, it attaches in robot and vehicle mode. You saw how it attaches, there's two little things right here, they just pick in. I don't like this, I have no need for it. Uh, here's his electro net launcher, you can see it's like a net, he just fires. My other fear was that we weren't going to get normal show accurate weapons, and I was right about that with smoke screen. This isn't a show accurate weapon unless you just have him hold his cannon. But uh, Shockwave is getting a normal can, so that's good. But, you know, you can fire it with the missile, and this net can actually come off, and you can shoot it as a normal missile. Or you can just have a normal gun. And also, this net, as you can see, there's this thing here, and then this hole here. So it looks like you can fold it around to make a little circle net, which indeed you can. And you can still take this and put it in here. And now, well, I don't know if you're really supposed to do this, but you can have that, and it doesn't really fire as well, but you can do that. I don't know if it's supposed to go around something, but that is something you can do, and I can actually see that I'm stressing this soft rubber plastic, so I'm not going to do that again. But, uh, not a bad weapon. Uh, it's not the classic smoke screen weapon. Would have been nice to have maybe a cannon or something. Oh, well. But then they can peg on here, it can peg onto here. 
So, but this is an absolutely fantastic looking vehicle mode all the way around. I am so impressed with this vehicle mode all the way down to the 38s on the door. He's got his spoiler. Eh, the back is a little plain. Uh, I'm especially in robot mode. I'm really hoping repro labels can spiffy this thing up. Uh, see, we got a port right there. Beautiful front section with this line here. The headlights. Just it rolls nicely. Like, no robot junk on the bottom. Uh, this is a fantastic vehicle mode. I love it. I love it. So, um, nothing really I can say about this vehicle mode. So, I'm, I'll show you guys how to transform him. What you want to do first is come over here and kind of just pop open these panels. And kind of just lift those up. <clears throat> and then come up here. And that just kind of detaches. And then these arms come up. And then what you want to do is unpeg those little windows from the side. And then come under here and actually unpeg the arms. And then this panel will come up. Up to there. You can take this arm and that kind of just swivels out to the side. Do the same on the opposite side. Swivels out. Then you want to take stuff and do stuff. You want to take this. Unpeg these, take his head, rotate that out, and then take these wings, or doors, and those just kind of come up. Take this section, rotate the head down, uh, lift this fake chest piece up, come to the feet or legs, unpeg that, and then, well, rotate his waist, and then take these feet, and unpeg these, or fold those down, take these sections here, these just come around and kind of clip into place, like so, and then there's a little peg right there, and then there's a little hole inside this fake chest section that just pegs in, take these sections and these just come up because those have to become a shoulder panel so you want to get those out of the way he's a whole floppy mess as you can see right in there where my finger is there's this tab right here that goes into the i guess spokes of his wheels so you just got to push that up in there and get it to tab in there which can be very tricky but there you go There you go. Get these legs straightened out. Kind of just take these legs, straighten them out. Uh, there's a little prong thing right here that just comes up. Those peg in. Take these windows, fold them in. Fold out these doors a little bit. Well, this tire came unpegged. That's annoying. Take these shoulder panels, angle those up. Take these arms, hang them up a couple notches, and then all this junk rotates to the back of his arm. Same on the other side. Up. Rotate. If I can get it. There we go. And these panels or things just come down. And then rectangle these. Get everything situated. And then, uh, ladies and gentlemen... Boys and girls of all ages, Transformers fans around the world, here we have the Transformers Prime Beast Hunter smokescreen in his robot mode. And what, in my opinion, is it oppressive? Is in a very impressive robot mode. I was so hopeful we were going to get a smokescreen figure that was his own mode, and we were going to get it here in the states, and it wasn't going to be all beastified. And thanks to Hasbro, we did. Now, as much as this is a fantastic figure, there are a couple flaws. First of all, the coloring on the guy. Now, looking at him, you can probably tell already he's got some issues. First of all, his head. Now, on his head, you can see he's got all that blue. Now... That's not really what Smokescreen's face is supposed to look like. First of all, 
those blue bits on the side of his head should be red. Uh, these little molded parts right here that are white should be red. And this blue crest shouldn't even be painted. That should be white. Why they wasted money on painting it when they didn't need to, I don't know. So first of all, and he should have blue eyes, not yellow. That bothers me. Uh, he should have some maybe some red highlights on the shoulder. He doesn't have all this stuff. I don't think he does have that stuff on his arms. And his legs look a little weird. Uh, the headlights, they match the ones from Vehicle Mode. But if they wanted to make them show accurate, they would need to make them a clear plastic. And then put some turn signals up on the top here. You should have an Autobot logo, but aside from all that, I, I don't want to sound so negative. Um, this is an absolutely fantastic mold and a fantastic figure. Uh, articulation, his head is on a ball joint. It goes side to side and kind of not really goes up and down. Uh, these shoulders underneath here are on ball joints. And then his elbows are on very tight ratchet joints. And then uh, his waist will obviously rotate. Ball joints at the hips, also swivels, bends at the knee, and with his giant feet kind of go up and down those are some big honking feet but uh this is a very nice figure now for smokescreen's weapon you can have him hold his thing and they said that it would, could double as an axe but i can't find a way to have him has an uh, as an axe also holding the missile but he can't even do that so you know this can fire and that didn't really fire but you can take that out and he can use that as a normal gun, or you don't even have to have a missile in there. And you could just do that. Now, he obviously doesn't have a normal show accurate weapon, but that's not all that bad. And as for his shadow quill armor, well, the way they attach it in the robot mode is if you lift his arms, there's two little pegs right here and right here. And then there's two little, or well, I'm sorry. There's holes here, and there's a hole right here. What, you, what they want you to do is they want you to peg it on to these two little prongs here. So what you gotta do is you gotta take it under, and you do a lot of fiddling until you get that on. <laughs> there's one side. Here's the other side. And this is how you're supposed to attach the armor to smokescreen. Now this, in my opinion, is absolutely stupid. I don't know what this, this is just to make him blend in with the other Beast Hunters figures. I mean, unless he's going to jump and kill you. I mean, I don't know how that's armor. What I would have liked them to do is, if I take this off quickly... What I think would have been a much better way of putting it on is if they could have made it somehow go maybe under his arms or somehow like this and make it peg onto his chest. That would have looked a whole lot better if you ask me like that. I think I think that looks pretty cool. Maybe put these somewhere, I think. I think that looks pretty cool. But uh this is really just a waste. <laughs> I don't think they should have included this. I mean Mmm, so flappy. But, uh, and then the weapon, it doesn't, I don't mind it. I mean, I'm probably just going to end up having him displayed just holding this gun. And then, uh, the peg from the top of the vehicle is now on here, so you can either store it on the back of his arm, or the pegs on the spoiler are now on his feet. So, nope. Get him in some pretty cool poses. I mean, that's pretty cool, if you ask me. <clears throat> But, uh, so happy we finally have a smokescreen figure. This thing is awesome. Uh, I think Repro Labels might be able to get a hold of it and maybe spiffy him up, maybe with an Autobot logo here, a few decals there. But, whatever. Uh, I love how he has his wings in the back with the double 38s. I love that. Very actual G1-esque. I really do like the character of Smokescreen Transformers Prime. So happy that we're going to be seeing more of him in Season 3. Great figure, great character. Uh, they, Hasbro really did a good job with this guy. So uh, let us transform him back to his vehicle.